So 3005, called the Low Intensity Test Reactor, uh, originally was uh, constructed in the late 40s, around 1948. And it was actually a facility that was set up to start to do some hydraulic testing on the early days of the reactor. And then after the successful testing of the hydraulic uh, 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 testing for the reactor, it transitioned to a training reactor. So it was originally called the Low Intensity Training Reactor. Uh, built to train uh, folks how to operate a nuclear reactor back in the late 40s and early 50s. You know, like, you know, we've, we've done 3010, demoed it. It was a reactor as well, but a different configuration. It was, a, you know, a pool uh, with two reactors inside of it. Uh, this facility is a little bit different. It's a water-cooled reactor, but it's basically a freestanding reactor, but it's basically five tanks. It was put together as a test reactor and now, you know, converted into what it is now, the, you know, low-intensity test reactor. So it's got its, you know, pool work is one thing, but when you're dealing with having to, re you know, remove a building, to get to the reactor from that aspect. I don't think that's something that we've had to do yet. Uh, normally the source term comes out and then we demo. This building has been very unique just to the configuration of the reactor inside the facility. From DEAC to demo, uh, so basically we go in and we identify you know, certain items that have to be removed from the facility as far as a, you know, uh, a waste standpoint, and then also too with a lot of uh, ORNL as far as the rag constituents that come. We have you know a lot of areas that have some high rag contamination areas, and then also now we're dealing with beryllium. So the the goal is to eliminate as much source term during deactivation as we can. That way, demo is a little bit easier, a little bit manageable. And with that, because we have an extremely small footprint, you know we have uh, you know another you know client in the area as far as UTB. Um, where you know we have to manage you know their facilities we have to worry about you know our, our boundaries are of serious concern because they're so small and footprint so small and then exposure to those guys you know outside of our boundaries so basically I mean the biggest thing is to go in you know the goal would be to get everything to an empty shell and, and then dim over from that standpoint and um, as, far, as far as 3005 uh, was pretty fortunate in aspect as far as source term. Uh, a lot of the facility itself wasn't too radiologically contaminated from a contamination standpoint. Uh, the dose was contained inside the reactor. Uh, we was able to go back and remove a lot of the source term that did connect with the reactor. So basically we was left with a building and a reactor inside. So uh, a lot of the block we removed after the fact with uh, mechanical means. Uh, with exception of what was on the second floor, we done all of it by hand uh, back last summer. Uh, but now we, with the shield block on the first floor, we've been able to do it all by mechanical means. What we'll see is we'll be doing demo in phases. So this first phase is removing, we've already removed the West Laboratory, the North Ancillary Facilities, that was a seal tank and a uh, filter house building. Um, later today, we'll be starting demo on the East Laboratory we kind of working around clockwise on the demo. Once we get those ancillary facilities removed, then we'll proceed with stripping the siding off of the high bay and exposing the structural steel uh, to allow us to remove the structural steel uh, above the third floor. Um, so that's the next phase of demo. And then the third phase would be then to fail the shield block, grab the precast concrete. And once we are at that point where we've removed the overhead hazard associated with the precast concrete slabs, we'll have structural engineering and safety evaluate the remaining structure to allow us to re-enter the facility to do some reactor prep in anticipation of the reactor removal. So right now we're lug testing to make sure we can do the rigging and, and lift the reactor. We've got uh, the stability clamp is going around the expansion joint section on, in the middle of the reactor. Um, that should happen this week as well. At that point, we'll unbolt the reactor from the uh, second and 
first floors where, where it's connected there. We'll demolish the remainder of the facility, which is, as you saw, it's just structural steel at this point. That will have the reactor then prepared to lift with the exception of where it's attached in the subpile room. We'll move the reactor container, the waste container, inside the footprint. At that point, we'll attach rigging to the top, then we'll go down and unbolt that bottom section, lift the reactor, place it inside the waste container, and at that point, the reactor will be packaged. Uh, the facility will be demolished. We'll still have some subpile area clean out and fill with CLSM, but the project will be done at that point. Well, it, it's important because the mission that we're conducting, not just for the Oak Ridge National Lab, but for Y12, uh, for our client, uh, the Department of Energy, these facilities, they, they served their time, they did the nation a great service, uh, they now need to be decommissioned, demolished, and removed to make way for future missions, for continuing uh, the advancement of science. Footprint is very tight at the Oak Ridge National Lab as it is at the Y-12 National Security Site. So in order for the, for the Oak Ridge National Lab Office of Science to expand their mission, they need real estate. So these facilities, we need to clear these old facilities to allow that real estate to be used for future generations and the continuing advancement of science.